All right, so today I'll be talking about hydronephrosis. Um, the reason I'm talking about this is because this is something I actually had congenitally, and it's been since resolved, but I wanted to see if it happened in animals, and it does. So we'll be talking about what it happens in dogs and cats. So what exactly is it? So hydro means water or fluid, nephro means kidney, and osis means the process, condition, or state when it's usually abnormal or diseased. So exactly what it is, it's the swelling of the kidney due to a buildup of urine from partial or complete obstruction. Um, so it's usually something that uh, develops in life, so it normally affects older dogs or cats, um, male cats, um, but it can happen to cats of all sexes and ages, um, but it's rare in puppies. Um, so it's n rarely congenital. Um, so. Where you, you would mostly have an obstruction would be right here in the ureter. Um, so that would make the kidney uh, get swol swollen um, just because it, all the fluid would uh, collect in there. All right, so some symptoms. So there's polyuria, which is when there's very diluted urine that kind of looks more like water. Um, apathy, so an enthusiastic animal um, may suddenly become quiet or lose interest in everyday things. Um, anorexia, so that's significant weight loss without apparent cause, so like they're, it, they're suddenly losing weight, although there's nothing that seems to be happening. Um, polydipsia, so they're overly, or needs excessive amount of water. And then there's weakness, so the overall difficulty with getting up, getting around, and having energy. Um, abdominal pain, which can result in decreased appetite or not wanting to be touched at all and anemia so this is normally found by your vet when they notice low red uh, red blood cell count during the checkup so some causes of it so it could be kidney stones urinary tract obstructions like i was saying before um, tumors or cancer fibrosis prostate disease cysts or hematomas um, as these can all affect it and so in this x-ray you can see that this is where the kidney would normally be and and this is like a normal one, and then this is it enlarged. That's a big picture. Wow. So, some diagnosis. So, it's done by a veterinarian, um, as you want to make sure you get it checked out right away, as it can lead to renal failure. Um, so, what happens is they'll do a physical exam. Um, we'll then notice the pain in the abdomen, weakness, and lethargy. Um, and then they can do urine and blood samples, um, just to check about the kidney. Um, and then ultrasound. So in this one, you would see if, if the kidney is enlarged as in this ultrasound right here. So this is the left kidney that they're looking at. So some treatments. So you could do fluid and antibiotics, especially if there is an infection. Um, you wanna make sure you're giving electrolytes just to give back all of the nutrients that were lost from the excess like urine that's been output. Um, and then there's a cytostomy, which is when you're doing an opening through the abdomen um, into the urinary bladder, which is what this picture is showing right here. Um, so kidney removal is generally not necessary unless it's infected or cancerous. Um, normally they would just remove whatever is obstruct obstructing the flow, um, like taking out a part of the ureter if necessary. Okay, and then so for recovery. So normal urination will, um, will begin within a few days after the surgery or after treatment. Um, so follow-ups are essential just because there could be an underlying condition. So you wanna do a bun test or the blood creatinine levels to see that um, and just make sure they're all normal. They also wanna make sure there might be a change in diet. So giving that plenty of water um, so they don't go dehydrated um, and then even doing a special diet for treating bladder stones or kidney stones. Um, so some of those are like described here. There's specific ones for cats and dogs. And they're from all types of brands. So it's just specifically the Hills one. And that's it. And that's your story. Let's give her a round of applause. <laughs> Questions, comments, experiences with this, with your pets? Anybody? Okay. So you said you were born with this, correct? Mm -hmm. So 
it, how how long to your life was it corrected, or was it almost like directly after birth? I'm not really familiar with his neonatal surgery. Um. So when they discovered it, it was like when I was in Europe. Europe. Nope, can't pronounce it. When in I, utero. In utero. Yeah, that's okay, what I'm looking for. Right now. I thought she was talking about in the country utero. or something. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Europe. No. Um, so they had, my parents had the choice whether they wanted to, to wait until I was born and do the surgery, or they could do it while my mom was still pregnant with me. They decided to wait until I was born, and so I got it, I think, a few months after I was born, and like now I have a big scar from it. Oh. But yeah, they just like snipped part of my ureter and... Oh, and sewed it back together. Okay, that's, that's interesting. So it might, I mean, was it probably a stone, was it then? No. No, it was maybe something that was just, yeah. didn't grow, you know, that part didn't grow or something. It didn't have a lumen, so then you got That's funny, I mean, not funny, but it's interesting they found it in utero, you know, by ultrasound. I mean, that takes a lot of skill to look at that. I'm sure it was ultrasound. Yeah, it was ultrasound. Yeah. yeah. The other thing is you can do surgery on fetuses. I used to work at a place where they were doing some surgery on um, piglets before they were born. You just gotta be careful about the placenta. And in humans, it's pretty easy because all the blood supply is only in one region of the placenta. And the rest of it is all free. And you just go in there, cut the amniotic uh, membrane, and you can do surgery and they do, yeah. So there are people that do surgery, think of it, doing surgery on the human fetus and you know sewing everything back up, that's amazing. So, yeah, I, I saw it done in swine, and that was amazing by itself. So, yeah, these conditions. I like how um, one of your things on the symptoms was, um, I can't remember how you phrased it. Go back to that one about the, uh, I want to say, what did you see? You said apathy. So in, this mor in our mornings class, I was talking about how when animals get sick, one of the first things that changes is their behavior. And think of Namwon. Who, who, of those of us that know her, we saw her this morning in my morning class. Can you imagine if she wasn't herself, how obvious that would be? Mm -hmm. But she's all over, loving everybody. And can you imagine her coming in and then just like laying down? We'd all say, what's going on? Yeah. Just, it'd be a, like a red, Big old red flag. It'd be a red flag. So behavior is one of the first things that shows up in the animals, you know, because they can't tell us, you know, what's going on. Okay, I'll, why don't you take your flash drive out of there because I'm not sure how many other people. How about Katie? I saw her here. Do you have a flash drive or something? I have to copy my email. Okay, so then I'll blank out the screen. Watch your head. There we go. That's a head cruncher. I'll do that so we don't have to read your email. I told you before that I, you know, I get emails from Russian women that want to date me. <laughs> but what's interesting is every day almost somebody from Russia hits my website because they're cut there. Uh, there's my web, my website registers everybody that hits there, and it's always dot r u. You can tell it's coming from Russia. It's like a little scary, like, what do you guys want? <laughs> I will say it's possible that some of the locations that uh, it'll come if you see some, uh, like, if you get like a hit from the Maldives where there's, I think it's less than 5% of the country has access to internet. Yeah. Uh, typically.